Alright, we've got a great big day planned tomorrow that I'll tell you more about, but we wanted to start tonight with more um, intimate time of being together with folks to be able to uh, spend some time together. So, thanks for coming to be a part of this conversation. And I uh, wanted to uh, recognize our board members, so if y'all would please uh, stand up. And I was supposed to know who you are. And
life of the street to the window. Um, it was a pretty powerful thing. Now, all that was accomplished is that we got to the match on time in the greater scheme of things. But if you replicate that same little interaction, that same little fine grain interchange between those people, you know, it was a way where the physical infrastructure and the way we assemble ourselves in the landscape, you know, create a humane moment. And uh, so that, uh, maybe I should run back to Chapel Hill. They may actually now decide they want me to, to uh, uh, be associated with the university. And my GPA was not sufficient for them to invite me back <laughs> at, at the time. But uh, maybe, maybe that little story might gain me some entree if I go back. But I say all that just that we talk about theories and public policy and place making and economic development. Well, what does it all mean? What, what good is it? What kind of effect does it have on somebody's life on a daily basis? And um, you know, that's why I think what John has devoted his life to and, and what he continues to try to advocate for is so important. It's those little, small, little stories like that that get knitted together that make uh, a real vibrant and rich place where people live. And uh, one of the recent articles I read on in place making is economic development basically said you make a place as beautiful a place that people can attach themselves to because of its beauty, because it's healthy, because the ecological systems function within a healthy brain. You build it where it's culturally rich, you build it where there's a certain degree of tolerance and acceptance for people who are moving in and out. And you allow them physical interaction with each other sufficiently that they can exchange ideas. It makes people happy. If people are happy, they're happy employees. If they're happy employees, they're productive employees. If they're productive employees, the business makes money, the region makes money. Everybody there is developing, not just financially, but that's one of the underpinnings of work. So um, I think all that's it, it's, it is very important to, to make sure that we always consider that it's not just these grand theories, but the things happening on the ground, on the sidewalk, and make a difference in people's lives about what we're trying to advocate for here. And somebody may be familiar with the new book David Brooks has written. I haven't actually read it yet, but in a couple of the excerpts I've read, you know, they went to great lengths to do a lot of research on what makes people happy. And the two greatest qualities were how frequently and, um, and the depth of which people experience affection and the wisdom of another human being far beyond their own health, their wealth, or anything else. So it's a pretty interesting, but very, very, I guess, simple observation to have to think about. Um, John Norquist, our guest, is uh, currently the president and CEO of the Congress for New Urbanism, based in Chicago. He's a former mayor of Milwaukee, and has uh, taught widely at the University of Chicago, University of uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Marquette University on urban planning, urban issues, speaks all over the place on all of those issues. Um, <coughs> former state legislator <coughs> Wisconsin, um, graduate degree in public administration, and uh, has put his education to work. So uh, we are certainly glad to have him visit Wilmington and share his wisdom and also to hopefully continue to have a relationship with you as we try to grow in a good way. So thank you and welcome to Louisville. Thank you, Mr. I always get nervous when I have a picture of myself. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to be uh, speaking tomorrow and more of a formal speech with slides and so forth. So I thought I would uh, talk uh, tonight starting from uh, the standpoint of uh, why I was attracted to urban design as, as part of my uh, uh, effort to improve the city of Milwaukee when I was a legislator and when I was mayor. <coughs> When I, uh, when I was elected mayor of Milwaukee in 1988, uh, the 
the feeling about cities in America was more negative than it is now. I mean, there's still negativity, but it was very negative. And the, the rhetoric around cities was dominated by uh, what had happened in New York City in the mid-70s when the city almost defaulted. It actually did default, but within a few hours, then they didn't default. And there was a headline in the New York Daily News from uh, 